Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Examining his occlusion, we can see that Russ is classified according to angle as a class one malocclusion with multiple spacing in both the maxillary and the mandibular arches. Let's turn this way just a little bit. He also has moderate overjet and overbite. If we examine the position of the teeth in centric relation, open just a little, Russ, just relax. We look at the anterior teeth. We notice the lack of contact between the mandibular and the maxillary incisor teeth. This is due to a premature contact of the posterior teeth. As Russell then closes together, we notice that there is contact made between the mandibular and maxillary incisor teeth. His jaw slides approximately two millimeters anterior and a millimeter to the left. Do this once more for us. At the end of this slide, the impact upon the maxillary teeth is enough to put the maxillary right central incisor in traumatic occlusion. This can be felt by having Russ tap his teeth together while my finger is on the free gingival margin, half on the tooth and half on the gingiva. I think it can also be observed clinically that the tooth is moving when he closes. Now Russ is now 12 years, eight months old, and this tooth was fractured, this ma maxillary right central incisor was fractured when he was approximately 10 years old, and the next day, this acrylic jacket crown was placed. <clears throat> In order to correct Russ's problem, the best treatment of choice would be comprehensive orthodontics. This would allow us to close the multiple spaces and achieve stability, and at the same time, we could adjust the overjet and overbite to take the anterior teeth out of traumatic occlusion. However, in lieu of the fact that he may not be able to get immediate orthodontic care, we would suggest an occlusal adjustment so as to remove the anterior teeth from traumatic occlusion. This is done by adjusting the posterior teeth, eliminating the slide from centric relation to centric occlusion. It's the guidance from the posterior teeth that's causing the traumatic occlusion in the anterior part of the mouth. So this case is not adjusted by merely grinding the anterior teeth out of occlusion. It's, if this were to be done, the teeth would merely continue to erupt and we would have the same situation presenting itself again at a later date. So the adjustment is made so that centric relation, a retruded superior position of the mandible, coincides with the maximum interdigitation of the teeth or centric occlusion. And we achieve this on the same horizontal plane, eliminating this slide that we demonstrated. The multiple spacing would not be expected to be corrected from the occlusal adjustment alone. This would require some orthodontics. Uh, the problem here is that the discrepancy between the size of the teeth and the size of the alveolar bone. Also, the rust presents with a tongue thrust habit. If, however, there was a single midline diastema and we were to eliminate this posterior slide, then we might expect a single midline diastema to correct itself. This type of case presents itself with difficult diagnostic and treatment considerations from a strictly restorative standpoint. And to discuss these with you today, we have Dr. Cartwright.
Russell presents with a unique restorative problem because besides having an occlusal problem, he also has an ascetic problem. It's very desirable in the restoration of this tooth to use some type of ascetic restoration. However, as demonstrated by Dr. Timms, it's noticeable that when he bites his teeth together in the present relationship, he has the central incisor and traumatic occlusion and as demonstrated also by Dr. Tim, it is in such heavy traumatic occlusion uh, that the tooth actually moves uh, while on the teeth contact. So this immediately would eliminate the possibility of us uh, placing just a porcelain jacket since a uh, porcelain is such a friable material, it would fracture immediately. On the other hand, to, pre to place any restoration uh, on this tooth without doing an occlusal adjustment first, we probably would have a failure of the restoration either in the restoration itself or in the occlusal relationship of the restoration. So ideally then we would want to do the occlusal adjustment and give us all the freeway that we can get behind the tooth. We'd want somewhere in the millimeter of at least a millim uh, somewhere in the distance of a millimeter clearance uh, so we could place some type of restoration. Now the restoration of choice in a situation of this type and in a, a guy that's Russell's age is probably a gold supported restoration and since uh, chances are, as he grows a little older, the shade will change, uh, we probably would do a gold-supported restoration with a plastic veneer. Now, if this tooth happened to be devital, uh, in addition to doing a veneered crown for the aesthetic uh, effect that we would get, we would also do some type of a post-preparation to give strength to the root so that uh, in later times, uh, if he did have another a traumatic accident or injury, he probably would not fracture the root. And when we do this type of restoration, while we don't make it a one unit casting, we would do the post and coping and then place the uh, ascetic restoration over the coping. Therefore, when he's maybe five, six, seven years older, if it becomes desirable to change the restoration, we wouldn't have to interfere with the root portion of the tooth. We could just change the veneer uh, restoration, which at that time, Perhaps if he's been able to have his orthodontic treatment, uh, we could then go to a porcelain jacket or a gold-supported porcelain restoration. So at this particular time, uh, there's no restoration that would be successful uh, unless uh, we can have some type of occlusal adjustment and improve the occlusal relationship of his tooth. Uh, chances are, when he had this temporary restoration in place, the tooth was mobile, and in placing the temporary restoration, uh, why the tooth actually was uh, put in this traumatic uh, position uh, with a thickness of acrylic and uh, maybe this is even responsible for some of the habit of his tongue thrust habit uh, that he has uh, grown into. So the first thing then we'd want to do is to uh, do an occlusal adjustment, uh, give us all the uh, stability we can get in that manner and then uh, if it's a vital tooth probably do a plastic veneer with a gold supported backing and then uh, if it's devital, of course, we'd use the post and coping and do some type of aesthetic veneered restoration over the top of it. So at this particular time, uh, we are limited then, of course, in the type of restoration we can do, but with proper planning, we probably can uh, come up with a very aesthetic restoration, perhaps when uh, he gets to be about 17 or 18 years old. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.